Today on the Texas Health Out Loud podcast, we are talking about nurses. They are a crucial part of healthcare, and with ever changing technology, nurses are constantly learning new techniques and best practices to stay ahead of the curve. On today's show, we'll talk with Joan Clark, Chief Nurse Executive at Texas Health Resources, about today's environment of advanced nursing education and where it might be heading in coming years. The Texas Health Out Loud podcast starts now. From Texas Health Resources in Arlington, Texas, this is Texas Health Out Loud, a medical podcast featuring industry professionals, hospital leaders, and experts discussing healthcare topics that affect you and our community. Texas Health Out Loud starts now. Hello and welcome to the Texas Health Out Loud podcast. I'm Alicia Howe. Thanks for joining us today. If you've been to a hospital or medical clinic, odds are a nurse has helped you with your care. They are specially trained medical caregivers whose professional development continues long after nursing school. This continuing education helps advancing research programs, treatment techniques, and evolving clinical care. But the bar for this education is being raised. Advanced nursing degrees are increasingly vital for clinical staff to stay on top of changing healthcare needs. Here to talk more about this changing environment is Joan Clark, Chief Nurse Executive at Texas Health Resources. Joan, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Alicia. I'm glad to be here. So to become a nurse, obviously you need a nursing degree, but there are two kinds of nursing degrees. What's the difference? Well, if you're talking about entry-level degrees, um, there are actually three types. There's a diploma in nursing, although those schools of nursing that are hospital-based programs are actually pretty rare at this Hmm. point, and I don't think we have more than one or two still in the state of Texas. Oh, wow. The also the other two degrees are the associate degree in nursing or the associate of science in nursing, which is offered through most of the community colleges in the area, and it is considered an entry level RN um, degree in which, of course, there is verification through a licensure exam, and uh, you know that's one type of degree. And then there's right. the baccalaureate degree in nursing, or the BSN, as we call it, baccalaureate science in nursing. The BSN is um, a four year college degree, which includes some of liberal arts and other types of of academics that are not included in the associate degree programs. Oh, I see. And at Texas Health, they've set a goal that 80 percent of nurses here have a BSN at the end of the decade. What is it about a BSN degree that's so important? Well, when you look at how most of the medical professionals that take care of patients um, function in the hospital setting today, pharmacists, the minimum level of entry is a doctorate. Social workers, Mm -hmm. the minimum level of entry is a master's degree. Physicians, of course, they get a medical doctorship. And because we are, as nurses, the primary caregivers of patients on a 24 by 7 basis, it's really critical that nurses get that additional knowledge and theory that is part of a baccalaureate program that um, really enriches their ability to work in a professional role as a nurse. So not only Texas Health, but um, hospitals across the nation are seeking to advance the level of education of and professionalism of nursing to um, eight out of 10 nurses have holding that baccalaureate degree. Oh, wow. So is there a national organization that's really pushing for this? The uh, Institute of Medicine did put together a panel back in 2012, and they published a book um, called The Future of Nursing. It was a multi-professional kind of panel that include nursing, but it also included consumers and other industry experts. And one of the multiple recommendations that they made for the future of nursing was to set a goal around baccalaureate preparation for nursing, mainly for the same reasons I just talked about, that professionalism, that the goal specifically was set to have nationwide 80% BSN 
in nursing by 2020. Oh, wow. So I know Texas Health really encourages nurses to advance their education here by providing advanced education classes. Is this a typical thing for a hospital system to offer its nurses? Absolutely. And we not only does our Texas Health Resources University offer a variety of uh, continuing education classes for nurses in a variety of specialty topics and other more basic skills that, that they may want to learn if they plan to change a specialty, et cetera. But we also encourage nurses to advance their education at one of the local colleges and universities by providing pretty generous tuition reimbursement. About $5,200 a year for a clinical degree, most staff can attend college at one of the state universities without having a lot of additional out-of-pocket expenses. Oh, that's fantastic. I would assume that that's pretty popular with clinicians on staff? Absolutely. We have um, a partnership with the University of Texas at Arlington for a, an ADN or an ASN to BSN program. So our current associate degree nurses to matriculate into a baccalaureate degree. Oh. And uh, they offer this degree online. And we've got about, at any given time, around 250 nurses that are frontline nurses on our staff in the RNWSN program at UTA, advancing their knowledge That's and great. using that tuition reimbursement. That's wonderful. So looking into your medical crystal ball, if you will, what challenges do you see coming in the nursing field in coming years? Well, you know, it's just numbers. Um, we are looking to a shortage of nurses. We are seeing um, probably what used to be the largest generation in nursing um, retiring quickly over the next five to ten years. And what generation is that? The baby boomers. Okay. So with, with the movement of, of that large generation of nurses out of the field, it's going to be really important that we continue to have students who are looking at for a career, a lifelong career, choose nursing. And I would dare say we have a great opportunity when we look at diverse candidates, diverse candidates that have diversity, as well as um, gender specific. Um, you know, eight out of 10 nurses tend to be females. And um, there's great opportunities in nursing for men. And so you know, as I look into my crystal ball, I'd like to see a more balanced representative population of nurses so that we, our populations of patients can match that of our populations of nurses. So what do you think is the motivating factor behind young adults choosing a career in nursing? Well, I wish more would. Um, I think the biggest obstacle we have is that they don't know what they can benefit from by becoming a nurse. So as far as motivation, there's always jobs for nurses. We're going to need nurses at all levels of care, in all settings, moving forward. And so there's going to be so many opportunities. But in addition to that, flexibility in lifestyle. You can work anywhere from as a casual employee on your own terms, or you can work full time in um, any kind of setting. And so it's a very compelling uh, career. Uh, salaries aren't bad uh, for starting salaries when you compare to other industries. You know, you have the flexibility of knowing if you move across country that you will always have a job in the local area. So I think it's a great career. Some nurses go into nursing for the career benefits, um, but I would just say it's important to me by making this call out to people to consider nursing as a field, just make sure that you're built to provide service and that this is a calling for you, that you care and want to help patients. Do you see any other trends on the horizon in the realm of nursing education? Well, we're, you know, a nursing education uh, continues to look at ways different learners learn best. And so we're seeing a lot more flexibility in terms of online programming for people who cannot uh, or in the rural areas and may not be able to get to an in-seat program at a local university. Because acute care hospitals are so inundated with 
clinical space requests for students. We're seeing more use of simulation labs to uh, help students with the clinical experiences they need to be able to help them build the skills. And Texas Health, as well as other major systems across the country, are providing better and more effective transition to practice residencies. So when they complete their training, we are giving them a extended orientation to the practice of nursing through, in our case, a, a residency which we call the Versant Residency here at Texas Health, which gives them 16 weeks of, of upfront orientation and then another year where we follow them and give them um, the support they need to transition effectively into practice. Well, that's going to do it for today's Texas Health Out Loud podcast. I'd like to thank Joan Clark for joining us today. We really appreciate it. At Texas Health, we're partnering with you for a better North Texas. To hear more Texas Health Out Loud podcasts, visit our website at texashealth.org slash out loud. You can also subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and Google Play. I'm Alicia Howe. Thanks for joining us for Texas Health Out Loud.